everyone, welcome back. Today I have Professor Wutke from the TUM and he brought three master students in management. And we're going to talk about virtual reality. Can you tell us what VR is? Yeah, so virtual reality is a new technology. Actually, it's not overly new, but the way we use it now these days is pretty new. With virtual reality, we move into a virtual world. Typically, I mean, that sounds fancy, right? But what we typically do is, um, and I'm sure we all have experiences there, we put on a head-mounted display in, um, for instance, an Oculus Go or an Oculus Quest or some other devices, and then wherever we move our head to, mm -hmm. then we see a different projection. So it's as if we were really um, in a new, in a virtual reality, and it really feels um, pretty real. And this is basically what virtual reality is about. So we don't see anything of what is surrounding us right now. We don't see the people. Um, we don't see the, the studio here, but we are in a completely different world. Okay. And so also yeah. you get to interact and alter this world all together if you wish to. Okay. That's also a pretty cool feature. Is there, is there something you might add, like what it's technically VR? Um, I would just say very, in very plain words, it's like a computer technology where it's like an escape from the real world. So you put those on and you're in the virtual world and yeah, you have escaped reality in simple words. And wherever you look, it's just the virtual world you're a part of. And until you take those off, you're still going to be trapped in the virtual world. So it's like kind of like a teleportation to the virtual world. <laughs> that, that's pretty beautiful worlds. But how are the experiences of you guys with VR? I think if I will share my experience, um, it has been uh, earlier it has been with games, and recently it has been with education. So I was in one of the cool expos where they were using VR in education, and there was a experiment or guest lecture. Uh, of biology and we studied a crocodile and all the organs and parts of the crocodile in VR. So it was so cool, there, there was a whole real crocodile in front of us and we could zoom the crocodile, we could grow in the body of the crocodile, yeah. could select some of the uh, organs or parts, zoom in, zoom out, go in the organs of the crocodile, specific organ, and it was so cool. I mean, it was, it was so much futuristic to put it in words and yeah, uh, excellently thrilling experience for me. Okay, and you think it helped you learning biology? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm someone who gets, um, who doesn't like to work with animals in, in real life, you know? I don't like pets and all that stuff, <laughs> to be very honest. So I, I, I can understand I wouldn't touch a crocodile. <laughs> That's yeah. a laugh too. <laughs> yeah, I won't touch a... Yeah. <laughs> I won't touch a dog either. So yeah. crocodile for me is a no-go. And for a lot of biology students, I know that uh, sure. they like animals, but to cut them or something is, is still a bit uh, of a challenge. Yeah. So uh, in terms of implementing VR or learning it with the technology, uh, there are no such challenges. And on top of it, uh, it's, it's more fun. Yeah. I mean, it feels like um, if I put it in a bit of fun perspective, then yeah. everyone has seen the movie Iron Man. And the way the guy, uh, Tony Stark, you know, plays with his objects and so uh, I had that kind of feeling while doing that, and <laughs> I enjoyed it like anything. It, I totally understand. I, I, I tried uh, VR myself, and it was pretty cool to have this experience, to look around and be free to look around. Yeah. Um, but also, I have to say, I, I got some motion sickness. Um, I don't know, does any of you experience this too? Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, the experience I had was a bit different, maybe. So. I was in Karlsruhe at a birthday party, and on the next day, when I was really hungover, <laughs> we uh, wanted to go to some kind of VR gaming station. Yeah. Well, back then, I think it wasn't so popular that everyone had something like that at home. So it was too expensive, and you had to go to some special places to play with it. And then in this stage, we well, were shooting some zombies flying around or around space and shooting each other. And especially while flying around all this kind of, well, gravity, no gravity areas, ah. I really got sick from <laughs> all these different motions that weren't fit to my body. Yeah. yeah so I had almost to throw up. <laughs> that Whoops. is probably the alcohol, the motion sickness. <laughs> no, I think it can be both because <laughs> when I had motion sickness, I, I didn't drink at all. So oh. I'm completely sober. I think there, there's this technology is that some educational parts, it had some gaming parts, and it had a lot of um, potential. But where do you think um, 
is the potential, especially in education? I see <clears throat> multiple things um, that, that could be done there. So for me, first of all, so looking from a professor's perspective, um, the, the question is not, you know, where can we have some fun experience, right? I, I do have my fun experience. I, I'm also kind of playing a lot um, <laughs> with these games. So I'm, Beat Saber is my game. Um, yeah. so, actually, I'm sometimes in, in the top 100. Oh, um, that's just, a just celebrity much, in the circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't joined the game yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Then it would be 101. No, but, um, <laughs> You should. Let's, I, I want to add you as a friend, and then we'll see. You should. Um, see you in the virtual world. Anyway, no, but, 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 but so I see there are many select applications, right? So there are um, select applications for seeing a crocodile, and it's, mm -hmm. it's massive amounts of programming, right, that needs to be done there. And the way I see it is now looking at it from a more didactical perspective, because when you're teaching, you're teaching um, a, a typical lecture here at Tom is, is 90 minutes, right? So you teach 90 minutes each week. Okay, now um, if you're teaching 90 minutes each week, then you have to think about, you know, how can you use it in a meaningful way? And, and for me, meaningful basically means that technology follows didactics. So what is it that I want to convey? And one of the key elements here at our university is that all content is somewhat theory driven, right? Um, I believe that everyone can apply these days. So when we think about certain models, right, they are formulas, um, they might be technical, but still applying can be done. And I know for many students, they would, you know, just go online and, and, and Google, actually, students these days, oftentimes, I know, they start searching on YouTube to find some explanations, for instance, That's what is very the, good for, me. <laughs> for instance, what is the heaviest object on Earth, right? Oh. That's something I would uh, <laughs> go to my favorite web channel for. <laughs> I would not, uh, you know, I would not go to a class, maybe. Yeah. But then again, we have to teach not seven minutes on a focus, but we got this 90 minutes to fill. Mm -hmm. And so, for us, it's very important to go with theory, right? What's the theory mm -hmm. behind? And that is oftentimes a challenge, right? In the traditional sense, we used to have lectures where we have 600 students in, in a lecture theater, and that's still often the case in Germany. And you then stand there in front and you teach. And that is what we call uh, teacher-centric teaching, right? I stand there, I tell my story. Maybe I'm even reading from a book, right? That's exactly. also what some do. Here at our Tom Campus I run, we are in the fortunate situation that we have maybe 50 to 70 people in a room or even less. So in an elective, we would go down maybe to 20 to 30, and that's already interactive. But now with VR, and that's basically the next step I want to do is, I want to be more participant-centric. So I want to have students to wear this headset and to be able to explore what they want. But in doing so, I just don't want to have them to be able to apply or have this wow moment of diving into a crocodile's um, mouth and, and having some fun there. But I also want you know, to convey theory because that's, at the end of the day, what makes us a university, that we are conveying theory so that students become ready to, you know, to execute it. Um, what we are training our students for in a bachelor is to become independent decision makers in a master's degree, to become uh, managers. And in order to do so, it's more than just applying and just you know, knowing what are the concepts just applying them, but really seeing the theoretical background, being independent, also talking about mathematical models, to derive this further. And this is where, in general, I see a huge potential of VR because theory can at times be dry. Um, I know that I'm teaching it. I know which <laughs> lectures of mine are, you know, where people are, oh, come on, what, what time is it, right? Um, but I, I see a great potential in here, yeah. actually, um, to make it more, you know, more living and more, more real in general. Mm -hmm. Th that's interesting. You're a professor for operations and supply chain management which, yeah, like you said, is a little bit theoretic, uh, theoretical. I it, think. Can be, it can be. Yeah. It can be, yeah, but not with you, because uh, you use new technologies. Maybe you can give us an example in uh, your lectures. How would you use VR? Um, so, so there are different, um, different ways of how we can use it, and maybe we can also talk a bit more about it, because we recently started here a, a project. I'm, I'm very honored to be leading a group of, of uh, let's say, five, at the moment we are five talented uh, students, two of which are here today, mm -hmm. um, and, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we can talk more about what we are doing there. Uh, this is a long-term project. It has mm -hmm. just started, um, and if, if I was now to, um, to give you some examples, so what I started is basically um, as a very first step um, to, to engage in doing lectures in VR. It's, you know, it's trying to do so because you cannot have 90 minutes. I know motion sickness won't happen there, but it's 90 minutes, it's too long. So I'm starting to have short video clips. And um, if, it, if it suits, I would give a short uh, sure. view behind the scenes. Um, I, I have prepared something. Um, and this is basically the way it would look like um, here. Um, let me just, and, and that's basically 
maybe just just two words of background. So yeah. um, I don't want to have it just you know just me being filmed with some environment because keep in mind in, with 360 degrees, everyone can look mm. everywhere. So um, the room would have to be very clean um, yeah. to give a good mm. impression. So I decided to combine it with skiing technologies, which these mm. days is not you know it's not fancy anymore. It's just something that's yeah. is out there ready to use. Like you say, a green screen and you can key yourself out. Probably if you use Zoom, you might have seen it because mm -hmm. uh, everybody has this virtual background. background. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But in Zoom, it's like uh, flickering all the time, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and with green screen, I can show you how it looks like if we can. I just sure, can just on uh, play the video. I just need to full screen it. So the people also can see it. And now we can you can move it. You are moving the video right now, right? Exactly. I'm moving it around. and. Actually, there's a link on our um, on our booth where you can also online of the online info days. Yeah. We can also find this. And what I would recommend, because this is kind of, I mean, it's boring, right? On a computer <laughs> moving around. Wow, that what's new? Yeah. But um, first thing is, use your smartphone, and mm -hmm. you can move it around in the in the room, and you can already get some impression of what it would look like when you turn 360 degrees. And even better if you have an, um, a, a different device, maybe a cardboard box you mm -hmm. could put around, or if you have um, if you have a um, Oculus. Oculus Go or, or Quest, mm -hmm. um, then you can get kind of the real feel um, yeah. with this with this video. And yeah, basically what I'm explaining in this video is you know how it works technically, yeah. um, and 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 how it would look like. And I also I started this this term to have very few select videos online. It turned out that this is much more effort that I of could handle on my own yes. in my home office uh, or working from home. So uh, let me just, uh, okay, I could, I could now click on like. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you should. And also the course. people who watch it should. Um, but maybe one example, just, yeah. just to shorten the words, I'm not going to show the full video. Um, this is how it would then look like when I'm um, teaching. So you got this virtual room where you got the slides and maybe a different perspective. If you feel yeah, like okay. you don't want to see me in full, you can, you know, can also <laughs> yeah. turn around. Um, if you just want to see the logo because you think it's cooler, yeah. you can do so. So it's really student. Um, it's centric. more like sitting in a room, right? Like uh, having the experience, which which is very interesting in times of Corona, where we have uh, to keep distance and also we are not always able to go <laughs> into the university. So um, I think it's a pretty interesting technology. Maybe you're, you're a student right now, mm -hmm. uh, and can you tell me what potentials do you see in that? I think now it's like a point that's more relevant than ever because it facilitates distance learning. So what we're experiencing now is that um, since we are such a diverse group of people, there are people from Latin America, from Asia, uh, and everyone went back home for uh, the semester break, and they couldn't come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I personally, nobody likes, uh, yeah, it's really difficult to learn online. Mm -hmm. But if with VR, it sort of creates an environment, like a room where everybody's virtually there. Uh, we, we could even have an avatar for like David and mm -hmm. all the students. And um, then it would start feeling like a classroom environment where everyone could learn from each other. It would. You know, it would be very, very real, like mm. very immersive. Uh, and I think that could completely, at one point, even replicate how classes look like mm. and really facilitate distance learning. So I think, yeah, it's, it's a great tool. Yeah. And now more relevant than ever. Sure. Probably, yeah. I mean, it helps a lot of people at the moment to actually get into the university flow again. Mm. I think that a lot of people are also missing the classroom and also yeah. especially missing interacting with a lot of people. I mean, I feel it myself. I've been on a smaller party for the first time since Corona started and it was really much more enjoyable than I actually thought. I missed yeah. it more than I thought, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this experience, like having at least a kind of virtual form of classroom makes it a bit more uh, durable also for oneself. But I think also that it will, at least for quite a long time, not replace any real world meetings, at least not until we get a full immersive version with kind of brain to computer interface or whatever yeah, uh, yeah. but that's futuristic vision um, so classroom interactions are still pretty much important and also for the learning for the discussions i mean the discussions work don't work that well in vr but it's a great enhancement mm -hmm. like also we had the example with the crocodile i think it would also be useful in kind of more um, dangerous environment environments like for mm -hmm. example i studied chemistry in my bachelor's okay and there we also sometimes had people who made some wrong decisions, then there were some <laughs> explosions, some poisoning, yeah. whatever. 
And I mean, it's kind of good that you make this experience because you have to work in that environment later and you should be careful with what you're doing. But still, you would have to ha uh, could have a more safer experience in the university and also a bit more enhanced yeah. teaching with VR yeah. via that version. And if I, if I may add to this, I mean, um, I guess we all kind of getting tired of talking about Corona. Like yeah. mm. you know, I see it on LinkedIn. Like everyone puts on these Zoom <laughs> screenshots. I can't see them. I always click away. I never yeah. like them anymore. Um, because, you know, this is not what we want, right? And we don't want to have a project here that's just, you know, for Corona. Actually, we started this before Corona. So everyone who's had it was before Corona. Um, but then things changed. But the way I see our project that we, we started is a long term. Mm. It's more of a perspective of the next two to three years where we have the strategy to support <coughs> our on-site, on-campus lectures. Because that's what we stand for. We are an on-campus university. This is mm. where life is taking place. And um, I've, I mean, I'm, I'm teaching uh, an, an e right now. I, I've taught you both uh, last year already. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, I really do enjoy teaching in the classroom. And that is, uh, in this, the students we have, um, as I mentioned that, the diverse background, this is a unique opportunity to have the exchange to, um, and, and we can confirm, right, to have the discussions and, and different cultures mm -hmm. and different perspectives. And this is really a unique Definitely. atmosphere in the classroom. Yeah. So by no means, I would never go as far mm. as trying to replace any of that. But I agree that sometimes, you know, we have some um, specific situations which could be dangerous or simply impossible. Mm. For instance, think about going to a company. You said, you know, um, supply chain and operations could yeah. be some, somewhat theoretical. But if you see a modern distribution center from the inside, all the technology, everyone's talking about industry 4.0. But mm. who can show this in a in a lecture, like we see these slides, oh wow, there's a robot, right? But you know, what does it do? How does it move? Being there and being able to record 360 degrees videos in firms, in distribution centers, in production, showing how lean works, showing uh, industry 4.0 concepts in, in reality. And now imagine if you were to organize a field trip with all students, like even 70 students, yeah. just getting the day, getting them all out, it's incredible effort, but with VR, what I want to do is I don't want to get the students into the company, I want to get the company to us. <laughs> and then have the real student-centric perspective that you, know, you can see it, mm -hmm. and I can later ask questions, and we can engage in discussion. And this is, I think, um, what is really key in using it, um, what I meant earlier with um, technology follows didactics. Mm -hmm. Let's start with um, what do we need to teach, and what are the concepts, and then let's see how we can use this technology. Th that's, think, oh yeah. Sorry. No, 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 no. no just, uh, <laughs> yeah. I just want to add a bit to what uh, David said, and also want to share my personal experience of uh, VR. Mm -hmm. And as we are talking about VR in tech and Tum School of Management or Technical University of Munich, we mm -hmm. are as technical as possible. Sure. And yeah. we are so many engineers uh, over here, and also uh, our business course is for engineers. So for product design, let's say, or if you are designing some mechanical engineering part it will be just so cool to have a whole part, a whole object in VR and mm. to be able to interact with it uh, online without really being able to touch that object and all. Yeah. Uh, Andy, in a similar terms, highlighted some applications in chemistry and with engineering as well. Uh, there is enormous scope of, of uh, designing applications and in terms of, uh, if I put it in business context, then product design, mm. I would say. Uh, I did civil engineering and uh, we, uh, did everything on, on AutoCAD, on 2D, and also a lot of time in 3D. But VR adds a whole different dimension to it. I mean, it's mm. as if I'm designing the whole building while I'm in the building. Yeah, yeah. Just think how cool will it be? <laughs> and now connecting all that to <coughs> business and supply chain management, uh, we did a stimulus, uh, a stimulus game of mm. supply chain management where we have all different players uh, in the game. And we, we uh, from a student's perspective, from a business perspective, we analyze how is it uh, to be at that place? Mm -hmm. And uh, we try to improvise that. How cool it will, will it be if uh, I can just walk, into, walk through the whole process of production, uh, operation, and sales? Yeah. So I know how the product is produced, just sitting or standing in the same room. And then I travel with the product, and then uh, I go to the retailer. Mm -hmm. I know how the retailer arrange, arranges the product, and then how is it sold? It's a complete different experience. And as David said again, <laughs> um, tech or VR is not a replacement of um, physical classroom, but it's an enhancement of mm. physical education. 
Um, I think so too, because one point that's pretty important, uh, economics, like mm -hmm. it's pretty impossible to build a factory right here just to go there and train there, but you oh, can don't, use don't VR. Don't underestimate the... Uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, if you come to Heilbronn, maybe they will build a factory for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, maybe uh, related to the simulation that you're mentoring, um, I think this is also a good example. So there's a simulation, it's called the BR game, it has been developed by the MIT. Um, mm -hmm. And back then in your um, intake, we did the simulation in classroom and the nice thing about doing it on classroom, you see you know, how inventory piles up, kind of, that's a very nice experience. Now, for this year, I had to switch to a completely online version that I programmed earlier this year, and where, for instance, Anni participated in, right? Yeah. Now, with online, it's cool, no more introduction, but the whole kind of thing of you know, inventory piling up and all this, what makes it real, that disappears, right? You just have numbers in front of you. It's a number not eight, but 80. Now, so what, right? Um, you make a loss, not 10 million, but 100 million. Also, it's just a number. Mm -hmm. But if you were to see it and to witness it, I think this would be a big impact. Now, in case anyone is watching this and interested today in taking part in the simulation, um, I can tell you there is going to be the simulation where you would be in charge of managing one of four companies in a supply chain. Actually, I think it's at uh, 4.30. Mm -hmm. um, later on, you can just go to our booth and you can uh, sign up for it, and then you can take part in it. But as you pointed out correctly, Vivek, um, so one idea is to put this into to, uh, VR perspective. Now, we are very early stage in our project, but I would now like to pass it on to Annie because he's the um, expert and he's in charge of uh, exploring the opportunities in this area. Yeah, as David mentioned, uh, the beer game is a game that was developed by the MIT and it goes like this. So you have a supply chain of beer and you go from the factory where the beer is brewed and produced to some wholesalers to the retailer at the end who sells it to the customer and you are in either one of that positions and you have to make decisions about what are you ordering for the coming weeks? So if you order your beer amount, then you will get it one week later also. Mm -hmm. And um, then you can see how the beer, so I'm trying to get it from 2D now to 3D, mm -hmm. to a VR version. And what I'm doing there is like designing some factory buildings, some retail buildings, also designing beer bottles, which was pretty much fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also some beer kegs or beer crates. And then when you play, you can enter the number of beer you want to order for the next week. And you actually see it delivered into your factory, into your wholesaler, warehouse, whatever. Mm. And can see how everything piles up. If you order too much, you will just get smashed by a hell out of beer. Mm. So that is also a pretty immersive feeling, like having a lot of fun with that game and getting a real feeling for how it uh, w is like to manage a supply chain actually and how many mistakes you can make along the road without even noticing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Feeling and experience are important words. Yesterday we talked about why you should get your master degree and uh, one of the <laughs> points that people mentioned is that many companies want people with some more life experience. If you finish your bachelor, you're pretty young, you don't uh, have so much experience, and maybe VR can be part of this. Do you think that it will give you the experience that will help you later in your job? Mm, yeah, actually, this was one of the reasons why I applied for uh, this position. So I'm also interested in programming in total, so I learned a bit of programming earlier on. And now to get more into the VR is pretty well, kind of the edge of technology at the moment. I think that we will have a lot of businesses in the future that are pretty much dependent on VR and also AR, so augmented reality, where you place virtual things in your real world. Mm -hmm. And I was more interested on the aspect of having an own company, an own startup that is into VR that can enhance our daily lives with VR. So that was my intention behind applying for this job position, more or less. I totally, totally understand it, and it's pretty interesting because we are here to give people an, uh, a brief view how it is to study here, and mm -hmm. I think it's very interesting that you can take part in those projects and uh, learn from it, gain experience, and use it later in your life for other positions, other jobs. That's awesome. <laughs> I have a question. We, we talked about it's in the early stage right, stage right now. So for me, it's interesting. 
maybe uh, we can use AI or something. So it's getting more interactive. And you already said, OK, they have to manage uh, a whole company. Do you think that in, in how many years will it be a real interactive game, maybe with AI, that will allow you to talk to people and get responses and really have this manager feeling? Yeah. I have to say, I'm not an AI expert. I know we at our two uh, yeah. main campus in, in Munich, um, they're building up a lot of you know, um, AI expertise, and they already have a lot of AI expertise. So they would know how long it takes. I mean, for me, AI is always, so when do we start talking about AI? When is it learning, right? When is it just you know, reacting to feedback? When mm -hmm. is it really intelligence? Where is it just a predefined algorithm? Yeah. So I can put in an algorithm, right? I can see how people are using it. And then mm -hmm. based on that, I can make intelligent choices, basically. But for me, this would still be an algorithm. Yeah. So um, when will it get full-fledged AI? Um, I think maybe in, 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 in 10 to 20 years, there would be a combination in the classroom. Because you've got mm -hmm. to, think, to think about a classroom. But then again, there's one big challenge that we should not forget, and that is really the massive amount of, of theory and knowledge that we have to convey during mm -hmm. studies. And I mean, all the students would probably agree, these two years, you're learning a lot, mm -hmm. right? And, and again, I think to have some cool um, showcase applications ready, you know, where you have like 10 minutes diving into a crocodile, mm -hmm. which you produce for, I don't know how much it costs to produce something like that, but let's say you have a budget of, of multiple, uh, 10,000, right? Maybe 40, 50,000 to have some really cool, you know, 10 minutes application. Mm -hmm. We can't do that because mm -hmm. we have, again, to teach 90 minutes um, and that 14 times a semester. Mm -hmm. So there's really a massive amount. And, and I think it is cool, you know, looking at the cutting edge technology. But here we also focus on what we believe is more the, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the feasible space, um, which means for me, for instance, producing 360 degrees videos mm. is something we can do, and it's possible to convey certain concepts in that amount. We can have selected applications, for instance, the one that Andy is working on, right? Where mm. we say we have one um, of, of our uh, highly talented students who's working here for, say, uh, one year or even longer on a spef specified task. I think in a you know, if you were to outsource it to some game developers, it would not be one person, it would be five people mm -hmm. in a team who would be working there half a year. So we have to see how we can cope with it mm -hmm. um, and, and how, you know, we can be smart about using this. I think AI will be a long way, but maybe also related to this, um, a different project that we are working on is something that uh, maybe AXA can say more about because this is one where, where she's then or will be more in charge of. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I'm also working with David and Andy on the VR team and um, I'm at the stage where I'm still learning and exploring the programming behind VR. But uh, the task that I am allotted with is a highly theoretical task. Um, so it's about uh, visualizing and programming an inventory management model called mm -hmm. news vendor model. I think David is going to talk about it later sometime today. Anyways, um, without going in the topic too much, um, the challenge that I'm facing is that this model is uh, highly centered on mathematics and statistics. Now, how do we explain a model like that with VR? Like, does it make sense? Is it feasible? Um, how do we explain the math with VR? And uh, yeah, so this is, these are some challenges that I'm facing right now. And uh, maybe sometime in the future, I'm going to co-develop some solutions with David. Like, OK, how do we put this forward? And how do we solve the solution? But yes, this is, uh, as David pointed out, the vision for 21, 2021, mm. or even 2022. So let's see how that goes. That's the time when probably the new students will be there to uh -huh. uh, be part of the project. Can everybody be part of this project? Um, so I would say participating as student, yes, that's the plan. So I'm teaching a course that's called Production and Logistics. Mm. I'm teaching a version of it on the bachelor's level. It's in the third semester, I think, or fourth mm -hmm. semester, right? So it's uh, next year uh, in spring term. And, and I'm teaching also a different version in the, um, in the master's program. Um, mm -hmm. And I say different versions because the uh, content is, is very similar, mm -hmm. yet um, the focus is a bit different because in, in, in bachelor we are more in decision making and in management, in, in master management more uh, becoming an, um, in, um, and becoming an independent decision, uh, independent manager. Mm -hmm. um, so, in that sense, as a um, student, you can participate in it. You know, you can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Now, there will also be um, some opportunities to work, I guess. Like, 
you know, developing content. And that is something um, that I'm looking forward to, to grow this team further. We now started with five people. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's amazing collaboration because everything has started online. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we are, um, I think, the, the, the combination that we are meeting now in person is the first time first that the three of us, at least, oh, yes. are here. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, once we are back, and I, I hope that this project will take off, um, mm -hmm. of course, I think it's a, it's a long-term strategy. So step one is now to start with the work, to develop content, to showcase it's working, and mm -hmm. then to grow the team further and to, to maybe even attract more funding and, and to, um, you know, go on a larger scale. And in that sense, I hope that we will also get some talented students. I'm sure actually we'll get some talented students um, coming here whom, whom we can hire. Because after all, I have to say as a professor, I've, um, I have to say it's pretty cool here. Um, once you start such a project and you make an announcement and you see so many talented people showing up mm -hmm. um, and, and being ready to work and contribute to this team, that is um, actually a pretty cool experience that we're having here at the campus right now. Yeah. I can imagine. Well, we have a question from the audience, and uh, it's to Andy, uh, and they want to know if you have much experience in programming before you worked on the VR project, and maybe you can tell us how you started and so on. Mm, yeah, I can tell you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it started with C++ back at the time. I think I was like 12 years old, something like that. But I was only looking into the stuff for kind of interest reason, just curious how programming works like and maybe also curious for programming on video games and stuff like that. Uh, later on, I started developing websites, also website backends, a bit more of Python programming, the whole mm -hmm. front end languages, and also had some courses in university about Linux programming, mm -hmm. uh, more Java development and stuff for my bachelor thesis also. And yeah, not then afterwards I came here and also had some app development in the process of it between, mm -hmm. but yeah. And then you joined into VR. Into the VR project, project yeah. Topic for you. <laughs> exactly. Hey, that's pretty cool. You, that's kind of your way when you started and studied, and uh, it gives a brief um, view of how your university life worked. Maybe you want to tell the people how your master in management was at uh, the TUM here in Heilbronn. Maybe you can give some information, because people are curious, what will I experience if I go here? Well, I guess I will yeah. start with it. Um, for me personally, it has been uh, quite exciting. Um, and there are also a lot of reasons why I chose to study from Heilbronn, uh, not mm -hmm. in Munich, despite studying at Technical University of Munich. I yeah. mean, in Heilbronn, we have a smaller bed size. So in Munich, in the same class, uh, there are almost 500 to 300 to 500 people. And here yeah. we are 25, which is a great advantage, I would say. Yeah. Uh, in terms of learning, building relationships with your uh, other students and also with the professor. Mm -hmm. Additionally, all the facilities, the modern campus that is there, Dieter Schwarzstiftung, all other things that you can do in Heilbronn, it's, it's, it's so cool. And now we have a VR lab. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Munich has its own uh, advantages and it's mm -hmm. also cool. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, Heilbronn was the best that, uh, for my own preferences, I would say. And... Uh, I think Aksa can add a bit more on that. Yeah. I mean, I think the opportunities are endless. They're the, potentially the same schools, but mm -hmm. there's a huge difference in the class size. And if you put that in perspective, like 600 students and 30 students, uh, and you're doing a master's or a bachelor, it just makes more sense to go for, like, it's so much easier, so much more interactive. The kind of relationships you form with your friends, with your professors, they're different. I found. I, in other words, I found my first job in Germany through my professor here in Tomalbron because of the network you form. Mm. So, um, yeah, other than just the master's program, um, the city is great. It's not too big, but mm. uh, you all, since you form such um, good friendships, um, you always find something or the other to do over the weekend. So it's really nice. It's, uh, it's, and the weather is great. So <laughs> Munich weather over Heilbronn. <laughs> so we have small groups, so we have a better learning experience. Mm -hmm. I already have the feeling that you have a pretty good relationship to your professors. So mm -hmm. uh, it feels like there's a good feeling around here. And also you mentioned the city is pretty nice. So it feels like it's, uh, it's a great place to study. Maybe you want to add something. 
So for me, I have to say, I mean, personally, I mean, every, every professor has different motivations of coming here. For me, it is, um, I used to work at a private school, uh, mm -hmm. for one of the leading private universities in Germany, actually, for, for 10 years. Yeah. Um, it was an amazing experience because the private teaching is always, you know, very student-centric, and you have small classes and, and very much interactive, um, you know. Private schools in Germany students are a bit more demanding, which I think they should be, they're paying a lot. Um, and then it always felt like this is the way I want to teach. You know, I understand that it's cool to teach 600 people at the same time, great audience, um, highly efficient, and that is the way it was done in Germany for many, many years, maybe even centuries, right? Yeah. That's the, the traditional way, but I like it in small groups to, to be more interactive. Um, so for instance, when I teach, I like teaching case studies. I like teaching simulations. You can do that with 25, 30 people. If they're more split it up into two groups and then you can go ahead, but not with large, really large groups. And so for me, one of the reasons was I want to teach small groups mm -hmm. and this is something you can do here. However, and that's the pretty cool thing about TUM, you got the Technical University of TUM, of, mm -hmm. of Munich branding, mm -hmm. um, which means there's a very strong and established university behind. So it really feels here a bit, in a certain sense, to be working at a startup where we have many choices that we can make, right? We, we can design this, this um, XR lab, the, um, which we mentioned where I can do, or we can, where we can do actually all the um, virtual reality stuff. We have all the opportunities. There's no like procedures that you have to stick to because it's all new. Mm. But on the other hand, it's not a, a, a pure a startup because startup often means some constraints in terms of financing. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> so this is pretty cool here. So you got the situation that you have a very established um, institution in the background and a lot of routines mm -hmm. like our study programs. It's not that they are like completely newly crafted. It is based on the experience of Munich and that is one of the key strengths to have the experienced and, and well accredited top school in the background and yet have the flexibility to experiment, to do new things. Mm -hmm. I think this is also one of our um, tasks here at Heilbronn to go into these new technologies and to see, you know, I'm working at the Center for Digital Transformation. Mm -hmm. So not just um, working and, and doing research in this area, but also putting it into classes. And I think this is a really great place. And it's so far, it has been a lot of fun working with the students and also looking into these new um, applications. Yeah. I'm really feeling it. Like, <laughs> I feel like uh, you're standing behind what you're saying. That's great. Um, so I think we, we talked a lot about uh, your project, also about uh, how it is to study here. Is there anything you like to add? Otherwise, uh, I think very quickly I would uh, add to what David said. Yeah. Um, so in today's world, you cannot imagine business without tech. Yeah. And that's what you get exactly at Technical University of Munich, the best of both the worlds. And uh, about Campus Heilbronn, why is it a special place is because uh, Technical University of Munich, 150 years old institute, has joined hands with Dieter Schwarz Stiftung, yeah. which is aiming to change the face of Heilbronn. And uh, probably they are trying to make it a next Silicon Valley or something. So <laughs> all these things, when they come together, it's such an incredible experience. Mm. And I think I could not, had I had a choice to uh, choose my study program again, I would still choose to do the same. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe so, yeah. I, I know, and, and we're talking about VR, and this is still theoretical, right? So we're yeah. standing here in a nice, we call it the circle, <laughs> because we have to keep our distance, right? So we are all in a circle, but still keeping distance. But if you think about it, you know, we can say much how it would look like, how cool VR is, how cool the campus is. Now, what I can say is on our booth online, I noticed that there is a link to what's called the campus tour, and there you can click on it. There's been um, earlier this year, before anyone knew what Corona would be, and before anyone would know that it's difficult to get on campus to get an impression, you can go there. There are actually two students who are guiding you virtually around the campus. Um, you can do it with your, again, with your uh, mobile phone, or I think with the Oculus Go it should work, mm -hmm. that you start it, or just on a, on a um, computer, and then you can take this tour, and you can visit classes, and you mm -hmm. get an impression. So, then it's not just us talking about it and you can say, oh, they were totally wrong. <laughs> they, <laughs> I mean, something is right. Uh, yeah. It's really, uh, I would say, just go to our booth and, and, and get, an, get a look at the VR campus tour. I, I would really recommend it and uh, you get the experience, how it is to walk around here uh, as good as it can be. So yeah, I think uh, that's a great wrap up. Just check it out and uh, see what the tomb presents you there and you can take a virtual round uh, on the campus. So I say, Thank you very much and uh, goodbye. Thank you. Thank very you, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> North Circle. <laughs> <laughs>